Welcome back to another episode on Front Row on Economy.ak. Today we're in conversation with Lakmini Vijay Sundra, who is the co-founder, CEO, Global Operations at Iron One Technologies. Welcome to, to the show. Um, I think when we say, talk about Iron One Technologies, we generally associate also the, your, one of your products, which is Boatback. And I think um, which maybe not, not a lot of our viewers know how popular it is actually um, overseas and the kind of the markets that you'll have uh, penetrated into, some of the markets that generally people think are very difficult to get into. Uh, what has been that journey and what are some of these markets that you've broken into, some of the maybe um, stories from it which I think will definitely inspire some of our viewers to think about some of the products that they're doing. So th thanks so much. So in terms of board pack, in fact, uh, we've been um, going global uh, since since about 2012, so it's been quite a journey. And our focus originally was just simply Asia, and Asia Pacific itself had so much that it, it basically consumed our time completely. And if, if you take the Asia Pacific region, uh, the neighbor that we have, that's India, it's a huge market. Uh, and it's quite interesting, as I mentioned, we, we went global in 2012, but we went to India only last year. And that's because there's this myth that India is very difficult. But, it, but in fact, as a software company, what happened is we found uh, that there was really no difference. I mean, of course, the market has differences, but there are no challenges in terms of stalling. And it's going to be, in fact, in our global standpoint, it's, it's possibly going to be about 25% of our global total play. And um, even companies like uh, RBI, which is the Reserve Bank of India, the central bank, uh, the largest banks like HDFC, Kanara Bank, and Bombay Stock Exchange. Uh, there's so many to, to talk about. So um, if I'm asked to give some advice to like another software or IT digital economy company, I would really say um, starting out in Asia possibly is a good stepping stone. I mean, of course, starting out in Sri Lanka to, to sort of set up your product, and then next Asia, uh, the cost is relatively lower. And then once you get your foot foothold, uh, that's when we also started looking global. So that's right. a part. Have you all also ventured out of the Asian sphere? And has that been a, has that been even more challenging, or you keep learning and iterating the uh, the process? Yes, it's it, it's been different. Uh, on one hand, it, it's all about the speed. So if we get to a market before anybody else has penetrated it, it's, it's a different market. Uh, if the competitors are there, then we have to play differently. So what happened is uh, now we, we are in New York. Uh, so the US, in fact, uh, we, we, are, we are looking at really getting the global market share, beating, beating the players even in the US. It looks possible. Uh, we completely understand these players now. Our product is better at, at, this, at, at this point in time. Uh, so, in, in that sense, um, uh, we went to the US only this year. So, it's, it's a fairly matured market to some extent. So, our play is different. Uh, but having said that, really speaking, uh, we find whether it's an Asian country like Singapore or Hong Kong or uh, Australia for that matter or US, it's similar patterns. Uh, you mentioned about that similarity. Do you? Uh, see in terms of uh, digital adoption and maybe usage of new technology very similar between Sri Lanka and other countries or uh, are we uh, maybe some, sometimes ahead of certain other countries? So in fact that's, that's an interesting question to me because um, when, we, when we got the opportunity uh, to, to sell board pack overseas, that was to Malaysia. So I'll, I'll actually share that story really. So we were at Sri Lanka Telecom, uh, the board. And as you know, the board is, uh, there's some ownership by Malaysians. So when we went there, that the Malaysian CEO invited us into Maxis, which is the uh, uh, Malaysian um, telco. So as I was flying, in fact, I still remember this because I was thinking, what are we gonna get ourselves into? Because I really thought Malaysia is far ahead of us. Uh, we are presenting this fairly new version uh, how are we going to cope with this? But we went to uh, Malaysia, we captured Malaysia. So Maxis loved it. 
then um, Bursa Malaysia, the Stock Exchange, Maybank, RHB, Hong Leong, you name it. The, the whole of the Malaysian, they were on paper. And at that point, I think Sri Lanka was ahead because we had covered most of the large companies by then. So it's, 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 it's really, um, I think with digital, with the internet usage, if it's available in those companies, they are, they are in a level, sort of level playing field. And just to, on a final note, I think um, we're also, in terms of the digital economy, looking at new business models. And uh, part of it is also, I know you lead your organization, but is you, when you speak to these uh, companies across Sri Lanka, across um, some of the countries you mentioned, um, is there gen does there generally have to be a leadership buy-in um, for the adoption of some of these technologies, which are sometimes even your products? Or is it more of a persuasion uh, within the hierarchy? So, um, of course, board pack as a product is a little different because the audience is mature and, very, I mean, in most cases they are on paper, for example. So that, but as of now, if you take it, uh, 2012 when we started these initiatives, it was a case of telling people why they should go from paper. But now it's just a matter of saying how easy to use it is. Uh, it, it's it's fairly um, standard that they should go digital. I'm, I'm talking about that mature audience we are uh, describing. But if you take the rest of the organization, uh, digitalization has happened. Uh, the buy-in is pretty much there. There's there's certain things, for example, the cybersecurity aspect and things like that. There's there's some awareness issues and things like that. We see that, but other than that. I believe five years ago, the situation versus now, everybody knows they have to be digital. Thank you so much, uh, Lakmini, for those insights. I think um, for our viewers, uh, finding out that even some of these niche products that Sri Lanka is creating has a market overseas, and that if you try, we can definitely um, enter some of these markets. Yeah. And, uh, and our skills are almost, um, or even higher than some of these uh, other countries we think are far ahead in the digital economy game. Um, so thank you so much for being on the show. And to our viewers, please stay tuned for future uh, insightful interviews such as this on economy.lk.